work it, make it, do it, make sense. Okay, we're ready to go. All right, we're going to have 15 minutes to cover a lot of ground. Normally, this is about a two-hour presentation. We're going to do it in 15 minutes. But we're specifically going to focus on the concept of the canary deployment in the context of Kubernetes. So um, how many people have actually experienced Kubernetes, hands-on Kubernetes at this point? Okay, well, you know, a handful of you. So let's go ahead and get started, and we'll get right into this. Uh, so if you're a Java developer, you're primarily familiar with this concept of using something like Drop Wizard or Spring Boot or Wildfly Swarm or Vertex, and basically the concept of the fat jar and deploying your application. So on the Java side of this, things have gotten super easy. Deploying a Java app is really not hard. There's so many ways to do it at this point, in, in, in addition to the traditional Java EU way. What's more interesting is when you pack that jar file and put it into a Docker container and throw it into Kubernetes. So that's really what this presentation is focused on. And this diagram here kind of illustrates what's going on in the Kubernetes universe. The red specifically is where we've added value on top with OpenShift. So you're going to hear something about three different projects in this little session. You're going to hear about Fabric 8, which is the Maven plugin that I'll be using. You're going to hear the uh, concept of Kubernetes, and of course, that's based on Docker. And then OpenShift, which is our open source project that contributes to Kubernetes. So Fabricate, developer experience around Kubernetes and OpenShift. OpenShift, additional capability like builds and image streams, build management on top of Kubernetes. And then, of course, what you see in the traditional Kubernetes world. The idea, of course, is that you can build an entire cluster. I'm working off a single node cluster here on this laptop, and we're going to just use that for our demonstrations, assuming the internet holds up. Now, the concept of the canary started with this concept here, and the, cons uh, the idea of the coal miners. So the coal miners would actually carry a canary into the bottom of the coal mine, and if the canary lived, they knew they were okay. If the canary stopped singing and fell off its perch, right, dead, they knew to get the hell out of the coal mine. So the concept of the canary in the coal mine has been a kind of a meme, if you will, a, a theme for many, many years. We refer to it often in all, all forms of uh, not just software, but primarily in the concept of you know when certain types of uh, animals die in the universe, what does that mean for the ecosystem kind of thing. It actually was, I found this image online too, it happened here in the UK, all right? So there's a Welsh coal miner carrying an actual canary in a cage down with him, uh, and of course he's wearing the, the gas mask there to make sure that you know, he doesn't poison himself. So the whole idea is that you basically put a, something, a little something into production, if it lives, good. Roll it all the way into production. If it dies, get the hell out of the coal mine kind of thing. All right, so the canary deployment, in my mind, is one of the coolest things you can do from a Kubernetes perspective. It really gives you a superpower you didn't have before. So we're going to walk through that just briefly. Okay, so you have the concept of the SCM, your source code uh, control repository. You're going to check into that. It's going to produce a new build of that fat jar, let's say, your Vertex app, your Spring Boot app, your Wildfly Swarm app. It's going to wrap it as a Docker container and push that immutable image through the pipeline. Uh, we're not going to focus on the pipeline here in this session. But the idea is it traverses the pipeline going through the steps that you need to push something to production. And when it lands in production, okay, it just takes on a little bit of traffic from the users. So a little bit of production traffic. Not all the traffic, just a little bit. And you decide what those fractions ought to be. And then you decide to grow it. And if it continues to live and succeed, you continue growing it till it takes over the entire production traffic environment. If it fails along the way, you roll it back. Does that make sense? Pretty straightforward? So if you live in a Kubernetes world, you're going to end up looking at these kinds of things. Uh, th this is an example of a deployment YAML. Uh, so I defined a deployment object here. You can see that at the top. All right, and I can, you can see I put it, we have a label on it, give it a namespace, how many replicas do we want? There's, a, whoop, there's the concept of the selector right here. That's, uh, that's important because uh, but Kubernetes separates the concept of services and pods. Ser uh, the pods are your runtimes, your runtime containers. The services basically are the virtual IP that sits on top of that, which means you can have multiple containers running in the background behind the exact same service that doesn't change, even though the containers are changing all the time. And the selector is the piece of magic that makes a lot of this work. OK, uh, so we'll show you that in a second. And then another piece of the magic that makes it all work is this concept of the readiness probe. So that's how Kubernetes knows that your component is ready to go from at least a business logic standpoint. It is responding to HTTP requests, and therefore it can be acceptable to send uh, traffic to it. So let's kind of let's see this in action. It's more interesting to actually see a demo of it. I have a lot of demos here, and there's not time to walk through them all, uh, but they're all out there in GitHub. So at a minimum, you should have a pretty good understanding for how to pack up your application in a Docker container and deploy it on Kubernetes. Uh, and, and actually, if you look at the Hello Boot application we have specifically here, it actually uses the uh, Fabricate POM XML. Uh, so in my POM XML, I have my Fabricate plugin here, right there. And that means all I have to do is say Maven Fabricate Deploy. 
and it basically takes everything that I had in my Java application, decides what uh, base Docker image to associate that with, build the Docker image, to give me the deployment YAML that I need, and deploy it into Kubernetes. So it's kind of magical. We make some assumptions about what you need to do based on the type of payload you've given it. Spring Boot app, we know how to treat it. Vertex app, we know how to treat it. Wildfly Swarm, or even a traditional Java E app. We can make decisions around all of those with the Fabricate Maven plugin. So do check out the plugin, uh, but we're going to focus on something a little bit more advanced than that in this session to make sure that we don't run out of time. OK. Let's go here. Let me show you this. All right, so I have a little application here. We call it Aloha. It's a little Vertex application. And actually, here, let's bring up the code real quick. Cool thing about Vertex, it's super simple, super lightweight. And you can see here I have router. If you get the uh, root of that, it's going to return Aloha X right now. But that, it, that is my canary version of this. So if I go back over here, and let's just pull this endpoint. OK? Run the polar. You can kind of see here. Let's refresh over here. All right, so that's the one that's currently live. You notice we have two pods out there running already. So that's two Docker containers that are running. They have this kind of interesting naming convention here. You can see that's the name of those two pods. And if you look at my polar, you can see it's returning because uh, the polar, in this case, does not maintain the cookie. It does not maintain the session, if you will. It's simply just returning what those two pod names are, OK? Hitting that endpoint. But if I come over here now, and roll out the canary build. And actually, let's do this real quick. We'll just change the code. So let's call this DevOps UK. Make it pretty obvious that we changed the text there. Go back to my command line. And let's see here. Da, 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 da. OK, I'm in the right spot. And I'm going to just run a, uh, well, let's do this. We always forget to do this part. You got to run a Maven clean compile package. You got to package up your fat jar. OK. Now, normally, you build your, uh, your fat jar, you put it in a Docker container, you load it in Kubernetes, but we have some other tricks. And, one, and I'll show you this one. It's going to call it OC start build. And specifically, that will run a build against the environment. OK. Dun, 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 whoop, I did something wrong there. Dun, 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 I deleted too much. There we go. All right, so we're going to do a build. You can see it's triggering a build now, but it's building specifically the canary option, right? So the users are not seeing that option at all. It's building the canary deployment at this moment. And what we have to do is move traffic to it. So it's doing a build right now. Looks like the build is done. Let's actually crank it up, OK? And my, it, the, the message is related to the fact that my clock is off on this system. So there we go. And there's Aloha DevOps. So basically, I'm just using something super simple. One of three, 30% of the traffic is now getting the Canary deployment. And you can see right here, it says Aloha DevOx, and that's every third request. So that's a super simple Canary. Now, there's another type of Canary that's kind of built into Kubernetes. All right, So in this case, we're just manipulating the service, the service selector, and routing traffic accordingly. There's another piece that people would like to refer to at the Kubernetes level. And that is, if I make a code change, let's go back over here and make another code change. Uh, let's just call this two, make it super simple, right? So that's just the code right there. And now if I do a start build, oh, let me do a, let me do a Maven compile. Often I forget to do that. So that we'll do compile the code and then do the Maven build, okay? It's going through its build process right now. You can see it animating here. This is the OpenShift console that sits on top of Kubernetes. And, um, you know, and we're going to do, it's doing its build. And then if we did it right, let me make sure my polar is correct. OK, there it is. So we now have pushed another change into production, again, only using 30% of the traffic from the end users in this case. So the concept of that readiness probe allows Kubernetes doing its rolling update procedure to ensure that the pod, the container, is ready to go from a business logic standpoint, because you write that code. You determine what you need to do from hitting a database, talking to message queues, are all these other resources available and accessible? If that's good, you return a 200. And then that basically says, now route traffic to me. Now, that's something you get for free in Kubernetes by default. And what we've done here is simply just take advantage of that. So the rolling update with the readiness probe, you got a canary right there. The uh, magic of doing, dealing with a service selector, you got a canary right there. Now, what most people do when they see this, because uh, I've done this presentation a couple times, they're like, great, that's easy. You have a stateless application. So therefore, you know, that works for anything. And of course, that's a 12-factor principle, be stateless. But can you be stateful? And so we had to think about that. And so uh, several members of the team got together, and we worked on that. So let me go ahead, and I'm going to roll that back down. Take the canary out of production. Right, so the canary is now gone. 
So that, you know, kill it, don't need any more. Let's say I didn't like that change. But let's go over here now. And let me show you something a little bit different. Uh, cube CTL, get pods. Uh, so OC project, movies. I'm going to switch roles here. Oh, cube CTL, get pods. OK. All right, so we're in the movie section. Let me get into the movie store. OK. Now, this is where it gets interesting. One of the things we've done is we actually have mapped the Spring Boot session into a technology called InfiniSpan, another open source project that we have. And what this means is those pods that are running, those uh, Docker Linux containers that are running, they basically keep in memory state across the two pods. So in this case, if I go over here, let's look here, you can see there's two pods running. And it's basically load balance the state across those two. And then you can see I have things in my shopping cart. So if I come over here and hit Add, and add, let's say, add this movie to it. Okay, what you don't want is your shopping carts to lose their data, right? That's the kind of thing we always want to have in a, a typical web application world. So if I come over here, let me get all my windows up. All right, okay, they all look good. Let's go look at the code. In this case, let's just make a change to HTML, so it's super obvious. So let's go with uh, DevOps movies, DevOps UK movies. All right, in this case, I'll use the Maven plugin to do the update. Uh, yeah, let's update that one. OK, so it's going to go through the process of doing the update. Again, that Maven plugin is not only, in this case, compiling the code, it's producing the Docker image, updating Kubernetes, and pushing it into the environment. All that is happening kind of automatically. And then it's going to go out there and update the environment. So where'd we go? OK. Let's go here. You can see there's the build happening right there. It's deploying this one underneath here, which is the canary. And if we go look at it now, nothing's changed. Because if you notice, my canary still sits at zero. I didn't actually say make pods available, you know, make containers available. So let me go and roll it up. OK. And again, the error is because my clock is off. But uh, you know, we'll fix that in a little bit. But I am basically said, now I need two more of these come into existence. And if I have my other little polar, where'd my little polar go here? Uh, OK. What you'll notice is as those guys are coming to life, these are the two pods that are already out there that are part of the cluster, the stateful cluster that we're talking about. And what's going to happen now is as those two guys join, you'll see them. And this actually is taking a little bit longer because we have it set to basically ensure that it does everything correctly. Uh, you know, It'll join the cluster. You'll see the state rotate over to the new guys. And you can kill the old guys is kind of the idea. All right, so there's the first canary that's joined. OK, and then now we have two canaries. If I come over here now and kill the original one, if I want to, let's see here. Let's see if I did this correctly. All right, and this one. OK, there's the DevOps UK, DevOps UK, and where's my other one? So in this case, it's sticky sessions based on spring session. And we've maintained the entire state of everything that was in memory across a rolling update in a Kubernetes environment, so in a Canary deployment. If I decide now I want to roll back, I can roll it right back. So the concept of the Canary means we can test in production and do uh, some pretty amazing things from a Kubernetes standpoint. So if I want to come over here now and say, OK, let's go back to the old one, I do have to wait for the new pod to come up before I send traffic over to it. But all that's based on the liveness probe and redness probe that's built into to a Kubernetes proper uh, to kind of show you Again, I have numerous examples of this, but to kind of show you what uh, a more advanced version of the Redness probe might look like, right, right here. In this case, we're actually going to check the health of the distributed cache, know that the cache is good, all the members have joined, all the data is there. Then we can tear things down or build things up. It's pretty straightforward once you have the concept of the Liveness probe and Redness probe. In the afternoon session, we'll go into much greater detail uh, on these topics. And you know we'll actually walk you through it. So again, that one's coming up. Whoop. Let me tear this one down. Let's just go ahead and go for it. Go all the way down. All right. And if I did that correctly, let's see here. Yep. Come on. There. We're back to the original one. Like that. So you can make production changes in the blink of an eye. Roll them out. See that the people are happy. You're not getting Twitter storms of people hating your software. And if it's good, you roll it back, or, or keep it out, or roll it out, or you know, 
rollback kind of thing. Again, in the afternoon session, we'll go into greater detail about all these different principles, you know, the Docker, the Kubernetes, and specifically how you do a lot of these things. But if all you need is just access to this code, you want to try it yourself, please do. Okay, We've we showed you the InfiniSpan piece. And then I have a wrap-up slide here. I'm doing all this on something called MiniShift. There's also some, something called MiniCube. They both work the same way. Uh, you know, basically, everything we do from an OpenShift standpoint is based on Kubernetes. You can layer it on. Do check out the Fabricate Maven plugin. The, the trick here is really about the liveness probes and the uh, readiness probes. That's pretty straightforward stuff. And then, of course, if you need these demos, they're all right here at this URL. And I'm out of time. Thank you so much.